Uh, I believe that I've laid out a blueprint over the last four years of how we can be more successful by, uh, you know, putting principles back at the forefront of what we do and, and uh, focusing more on membership growth and, and turning those people into activists and, and candidates and campaign volunteers and, and support staff. And so, um, you know, I, I think that I have an opportunity to help the party be more successful. If I didn't, I wouldn't be running. So, <laughs> so you are. Well, everyone, you know, in 2018, everyone said, if this guy be gets on the Libertarian National Committee, we're going to have this bad press all the time. Well, I've been on the Libertarian National Committee for two years, and it's never never been in any press um, ex outside of, uh, you know, the normal everyday people holding on to a lot of things that a lot of people say. Um, you know, I really don't have that much in the closet, you know, outside of a DUI from January of 2009. Uh, there's no police record. There's no, I mean, there's just nothing, you know, and, and so... Uh, people are going to run with whatever they want to run with, and I've had the opportunity to help build a 30% membership increase in 2019, despite all those rumors. So um, I, I don't think it's going to help or hurt. I, I, I keep working in spite of all that stuff for this party. So, so the membership growth. I do not. No, my uh, so my link is just a normal uh, LNC member link. It's the same one that Nick Sarwark has. It just at the end of the link it has our initials, and so um, all that does for us is is gives us the opportunity to track the amount of membership that we bring in. It gets sent like right in a, a spreadsheet to Daniel Fishman. Um, the people that have uh, those affiliate links that actually pay them are usually media type personalities. So um, I know Tom Woods has got one, Scott Horton has got one, uh, the guys from um, Lines of Liberty, so like Mark Claire and John Odermatt. Uh, those are the types that use those links, and and it's, I think it was a good idea for for Dan to come up with that stuff because you know now we're now we're recruiting people, and the people who are doing the recruiting are getting paid. It's a very small amount, I think, five percent for the first year or something that the person becomes a member. So it's an amazing thing, but no, we don't have that. Uh, the Mises Caucus doesn't have one of those as uh, either. In fact, I don't even think the Mises Caucus has a dedicated link for recruiting at all. Um, but with the numbers that I know the 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 podcasters have brought in and my numbers combined I mean it's a large percentage of that 30% that came in in 2019 for sure the, so, the largest percentage so you mentioned the podcasters well first of all I haven't been endorsed by anybody except Tom Woods he's the only one that's endorsed me out of all the podcasters you think I'd get some more endorsements but uh you know I haven't ever you know I've listened to probably I don't know something like 300 episodes of Tom Woods. I've never heard the neo confederism or you know that 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 people blame on him. Has he had guests on that I don't like? Sure. Every podcaster I know has had guests on that I don't like. Uh, I don't think he necessarily supports. He, I know he doesn't support Chris Cantwell anymore or any of that stuff. You know, he had the guy on before the Unite the Right rally. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to say that everything any podcaster has ever said, I agree with, I, I mean, you know, I have a podcast too. Now you can listen to, it's called break the cycle with Josh Smith. I'm sure people will find things in that podcast that they disagree with me on. Um, and that's just life. You know, I, uh, I think that Tom and Dave and Scott Horton, especially, and, um, you know, the guys from Lions of Liberty and a lot of these podcasters, I feel like they've done more good than bad. And so I'm not going to use my time to attack them or go after them when I could be growing the party and that's you know that's my most important focus so so some of the other skeletons that yeah absolutely and and you know in this year so in 2018 um you know i i came on the scene as essentially the attack candidate um, everyone saw me as trying to purge members especially the libertarian socialists and this and that and you know, I think I've spent the last two years making inroads with those same people. You know, Mike Shipley and I get along really well. Uh, even last night, I had the opportunity to talk with James Weeks quite a bit, and I think we've made a few inroads, which was nice. So um, it, I believe it's all about burying the hatchet with people and trying to find ways to build the party. And, and it's something that I had to learn the hard way after an absolute stomping uh, at the at the national convention in 2018, where I basically had to lick my wounds for the next year. But um, I learned a lot, and it was a it was a humbling experience that really, you know, made me understand that 
my tactics were not the best tactics. Now, if you want to talk about personal relationships, it's all speculation, and I'm not going to get I'm not going to get into it at all. I mean, it's completely 100% speculation from you know all the internet that watches me every day. Um, it, it, things are never how they're perceived to be, and so um, if I can make those relationships better too, I'd be happy to do so, and I've tried in the past. So. Uh, so. Absolutely. Um, I do have a full-time day job just like the other, well, I don't think Mike has a full-time day job, but I know that Joe is a full-time tax attorney that works a lot in D.C., but um, yeah, and so, yes, I have no problem traveling, obviously, and I've, I've done a lot of fundraising for the traveling that I do now, but it's because I'm, it's an every weekend thing for months. Um, I've had no problem traveling to LNC meetings. I've gone to several events. Last year, I went to North Dakota's state convention to help them fundraise and bring members in and I've done you know I've traveled for other media appearances and, and and the likes as well I have no problem doing that in fact I enjoy that work that's the that's the part of this job that I enjoy is the getting to interact with people around the country and, and so make inroads so so I know that that's your plan And I'll talk to you about that. Uh, so before I started my national chair campaign, I'm also an at-large representative on the California Ex Ex Executive Committee. And, um, and uh, there's one certain person who doesn't like me very much who tried to get me removed at the last uh, XCOM meeting because they held the XCOM meeting on a Monday after the state convention uh, when I had to travel back home and go to work. And so they knew I was taking on a lot by traveling every weekend and that I would have to miss a meeting or two um, for the state. I haven't, but as far as the LNC goes, I missed the very first meeting after I got elected uh, in Arizona. Um, I, I made sure everyone knew that I was gonna miss that meeting. I, you know, And I'm not the only person on the LNC that's missed a meeting this term. Uh, our vice chair has missed some, uh, a couple of region reps have missed some. It, it happens, people have lives outside of uh, this 100% non-funded voluntary work and so I missed one meeting but I haven't missed a single meeting for the LNC since uh, you know I don't miss my county meetings because I'm the treasurer and they need me around uh, but we have alternates on the California XCOM I mean they're literally there because not everyone can make the California meetings all the time so um, I won't get, you know I have no problems with the California XCOM those guys we've done a lot of good work but I think I've added a thousand new California members over the last year it's just one personality that doesn't like me and so well and I really appreciate you giving me the time Well, I'd like to, I mean, so I've heard these claims of, of financial impropriety with the, with the Mises Cox, and I have no, I really don't know what anybody's talking about. I know someone came to me the other day and said, hey, uh, we can't find a law that says you're, you know, the caucus is allowed to help support a, a private campaign for chairman of the Libertarian National Committee, but we called the FEC. I mean, we talked to the FEC. Those guys talked to the FEC more than any caucus or PAC I know, really. Uh, so I, I really don't know what, you, what you're talking about or what anybody else would be talking about as far as a hand grenade goes um, with that with those issues. So. Well, I mean, just any controversy that might come up. I mean, we could have a candidate for office get arrested for DUI. We could have. Oh, sure, like, sure. You know, like, oh, that like, kind of stuff. You know, like, you're going to have. We have candidates for office get arrested for DUIs all the time. I'm like, this is the Libertarian Party, man. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have a, a current presidential candidate that's running to get our nomination that spent time in federal prison. I mean, it's uh, look any any I actually welcome those opportunities because it gives us an opportunity to get earned media and talk about the libertarian perspective on some of this stuff, especially drug crimes or the you know the the federal issue that Mark Whitney, who's running for. Uh, um, uh, president had was that he bought a van and put a skin on it uh, for his Ben and Jerry's franchise when he was like in his early 20s and because he he bought it with his personal money for the business they put him in federal prison for it and that gives me the opportunity that gives me an opportunity that I want in the media I want to talk about that stuff well thank you so much for being here Yeah, absolutely. I just uh, I just hope that the delegates know that I have put in the work over the last two years. I, you know, I came on the scene in 2018 running on a, a campaign of promises and goals and dreams for the LP, and I didn't really have anything tangible to show. Uh, I didn't I didn't have 
uh, the trust of the delegation, um, and and rightfully so. You know, I came out of nowhere. I'm just a maintenance guy from from the West Coast who uh, saw an opportunity to help the party and and try to capitalize on it. But I hope that people will look at my record over the last two years, the membership recruitment, uh, the candidates, the campaigns that I've helped on. Uh, I hope that people will take that stuff into account, and look at the real tangible successes that the party has had over the last two years, and 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 just throw me a, a vote at the national convention. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot, Vincent. I appreciate it.